Hello and welcome back everyone. I'm Changiraptor and in this video I'll be continuing my rundown of my favourite musical moments in Ruby. This time we'll be going over Volume 2 and like last time I have 15 entries to go through plus honourable mentions. Also like last time, and this will be a running theme, this isn't really a definitive ranking but it's more just a collection of my favourite moments in a rough order. Also because this is Volume 2, which probably has the highest percentage of score that is not on the soundtrack. Some of these entries will just have parts of the episodes playing instead of the music, so get your ears ready for those ones. Alrighty, let's do this! I was wondering, why did you want to become a huntsman? Look around and tell me what you see. Coming in at number 15 is one of Volume 2's best moments even without music, Dr. Rublek's monologue in Chapter 9. The scene is already fantastic, but the music is so poignant that it's almost urging you to listen to and remember every single word of Ublex Wisdom. Also, fun fact, the melody here gets referenced later on in Volume 4, in a similarly destroyed settlement. Next up is the campfire scene from Chapter 10. This is a very introspective moment for Weiss, Blake, and Yang, so naturally we get references to Mirror Mirror, From Shadows, and I Burn. Each are great, but I particularly like the From Shadows reference, as it comes in two distinct parts. First it sounds more serious as Blake talks about Adam, and then it becomes more mournful as she shifts the topic towards herself. I always love seeing the different sides of From Shadows represented in the score, as it's a song that's about more than just Blake. All my life, I fought for what I thought was right. I had a partner named Adam, more of a mentor, actually. He always assured me that what we were doing would make the world a better place. But of course, his idea of a perfect future turned out to be not perfect for everyone. I joined the Academy because I knew huntsmen and huntresses were regarded as the most noble warriors in the world always fighting for good, but I never really thought past that. When I leave the academy, what will I... How can I induce so many years of hate? I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're not one to back down from a challenge, Blake. But I am! I do it all the time. When you learned I was a Faunus, I didn't know what to do, so I ran. When I realized my oldest partner had become a monster, I ran. Even my semblance... I was born with the ability to leave behind a shadow of myself, an empty copy that takes the hit while I run away. Next up is the music I like to call... Underground Crime Network! This scene starts with the music being very oobleck-y, even following and matching his movements, much like Volume 1. favorite things that happens here though is the tone change that's instigated by the music. Ublet gets progressively more serious as the scene goes on, but the music switches instantly and continues to build up the tension for the rest of the scene. I also really love the short little choral idea as we learn the terrible fate of Mountain Glen, followed immediately by something a bit more fun as Ublek's weapon is revealed.
The Goliath scene in Chapter 9 introduces us to two recurring motifs. First, there's the main Grimm theme, and then the Huntsman theme right after. That part is already pretty neat, but I particularly like the later bit where Ublek talks about why the Grimm aren't attacking anyone. We hear the secondary Grimm motif from Volume 1, an idea that I like thinking of as representing the threat of the Grimm and the dread they bring. Then after a very foreboding little string part, the music closes out with what I'd call a classic version of the main Grimm theme. Okay, so for this next one I'm cheating and putting three scenes into one spot, and to make it even more difficult, the music for all of these scenes are not on the soundtrack. So yeah. These are the Arcos scenes from chapters 5, 6, and 7. For chapter 5 I'm specifically referring to when Oblivious Jean does a dumb and mentions Weiss. Almost instantly we hear the secondary Arcos theme, and it sounds so freaking sad and I love it. It's... Weiss. Oh. What about her? I asked her to the dance and she shot me down. <laughs> Big surprise, right? <laughs> well, I believe the saying goes, there's plenty of fish in the sea. That's easy for you to say. You've probably got guys clamoring over each other just to ask you out. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Oh, please. If you don't get a date to the dance, I'll wear a dress. <laughs> it's like we're hearing exactly what Pyrrha feels, which I find both horrible and really, really cool. In Chapter 6, it's when Pyrrha gives Jean advice, and pretty much the same thing happens. The music is sad and heartbreaking, but I love it. But what if- Jean, you can't get it wrong if it's the truth. You're right. Thanks, Pyrrha. Good talk, Ren! <sighs> Practice what you preach, Pyrrha. And then in Chapter 7, we finally get Pyrrha being real with Jean, and this time we hear the main Arcos theme, aka the one that's in Forever Fall. While it is still sad sounding, there's also something happy or hopeful about it. It's a unique variation of the theme that I don't think we've heard before or since. Next up is the Midnight Waltz from the end of Chapter 7. As this is very much Cinder's, uh, Cinderella moment, it sounds like it comes straight from a fairy tale, which is brilliant. You can also kind of think of this as being the music Cinder hears when things are just going her way. 
I wonder if me saying that has anything to do with something that happens much later on in the show. Hmm. Next is Ozpin's speech from Chapter 8, one of my favourite scenes in all of Volume 2. Beyond the speech itself, which is wonderful, the music beautifully reflects what is being talked about. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance of a major historical conflict like the Great War. And it's a melody we would hear again in the Volume 4 World of Remnant episodes. The music then turns more hopeful as we learn more about Remnant's colour naming tradition and its history, and then it becomes more serious as students are informed of their new mission assignments. In Chapter 2, we have the scene between Ozpin and Ironwood, and it's here where Ozpin's theme is properly established for the first time. I've always found Ozpin's music to be perfectly reflective of his mysterious nature, his wisdom, and his somewhat light-hearted yet extremely serious demeanour, and this introduction to his theme is one of the best. Staying with the same scene, Chapter 2 opens with perhaps one of the best musical introductions in all of Ruby. This loud and proud theme is of course the one that would come to represent James Ironwood and the Atlesian military, and is one of my all-time favourites. Next up is the iconic food fight from Chapter 1. In a scene where we got to see Monty doing what he did best, we also get to hear Jeff Williams doing what he does best with a kick-ass piece of score.
while it's dominated by the sound of his signature guitar, Jeff allowed the character's musical identities to be represented without detracting from the overall feel of the fight. The piano for From Shadows is the clearest example of this. Probably my favourite part though is Mirror Mirror. It starts off well within the realm of Weiss's usual sound, but then Jeff decided to flex on all of us and play probably the most complex part of the song on guitar. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention what is probably the most intense reprise of Red Light Roses we've ever heard. I love these guys. He can't see in the dark. Don't let him get away! Stop! The window! Stop him! Next up is the Paladin Chase from Chapter 4. After the sudden and intense introduction to this sequence, we end up on the highway, which is my favourite part. More than eight years on and I've still never skipped this part of the score when I've heard it. Each individual part just flows so well into the next and it all sounds phenomenal. In particular there's Sun's moment, Weiss joining the fray backed up by This Will Be The Day and Mirror Mirror, and Tortrix theme played by that gnarly sin. Coming in at number 4 is a pretty short piece of score, but nonetheless it is one of my favourites. In the aftermath of the food fight in Chapter 1, Glinda Goodwitch comes in to set things in order. The visual spectacle of her restoring the cafeteria is accompanied by the most magical version of Glinda's seldom heard theme.
Next up might be my favourite version of Tortwig's theme in the entire show, which may surprise you when you hear it, but I will explain. Simply put, this is the definitive Roman Tortwick moment for me. It's a small moment, but it's one of the first things I think of when it comes to Tortwick. His sass and charisma is on full display through the dialogue, which is captured perfectly through the voice performance. And then in the score, we hear only the first four notes of his theme, and it's sinister and dark, but with the smallest little touch of playful mischief. Hey boss! found something you might want to see. Is it good or bad, Perry? Because let me tell you, I have had a day. Uh, it's a little girl? That would be bad. Put it all together and you have my favourite Roman Torchic moment of all time. Just missing out on the top spot is a moment from the finale that's not on the soundtrack. Now I must admit, this moment has definitely shot up the ranks thanks to the more recent volumes, and that's made me look at it in a different way. You brought this on yourself. Leave us. This is the very first time in the show where we hear Ironwood's theme take on a more somber tone, which I love because it acts as foreshadowing for the events that will eventually happen down the road, which makes me feel things. Now it's time for honorable mentions. There's quite a few, so let's rapid fire this. The rally in chapter four. I love how foreboding it is and Roman's theme is great as usual. Yang vs. Neo in Chapter 11 features the first appearance of Neo's theme. Weiss vs. Bainsaw, also from Chapter 11. Listen to those horns! The approach to Mountain Glen in Chapter 9. Appropriately intense music for Team Ruby's first proper mission. Team Ruby in their dorm from Chapter 3. A fun little tune that will end up being heard a few times in the future. Team Ruby in their dorm from Chapter 2. A beautiful rendition of Time to Say Goodbye. Ruby and Ospin's moment in Chapter 6. Formal strings, piano, and harpsichord for the win. Cinder's introduction in Chapter 1. The iconic establishment of Cinder's theme. The end of Chapter 1. I love that ominous build-up. Ironwood and Glinda in Chapter 10. A scene that offers a lot in retrospective, and music that would return in a pivotal moment in Volume 7. And finally, the Blake and Ospin scene from Chapter 2. From Shadows is always a win. And finally, number one. The sparring match between Pyrrha and Mercury is my favourite musical moment of Volume 2 simply because it is a masterclass of musical tension. It achieves this through incredibly simple means, basically only using percussion for the whole thing. The lead up to the first blow starts small but steadily builds and builds and builds until the first attacks are thrown and then the music quickly fades away, allowing everyone to take a breath. which is then suddenly forced from the lungs as the music comes back suddenly and with force. The next part carries on much the same, with things taking a turn once Pyrrha is disarmed. The music then does a really cool thing and reflects Pyrrha falling back on her semblance with a metallic sound. Of course, by this point, Mercury has gathered the information he needs, and he forfeits the match, leading to an intentionally unsatisfying ending to both the fight and the score. And there we have it, my top 15 musical moments from Ruby Volume 2. 
What are yours? Let me know in the comments. Next time we'll be looking at Volume 3, and spoiler alert, there'll be more than 15 entries because the music just gets even better. Be sure to check out my other videos if you haven't already, and I'll see you then. Bye bye. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance. Oh boy, this is going to be a toughie, I can tell already. God damn. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance of a major historical conflict. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance. Oh my god. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remember. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance of a major historical conflict like the Great War, and it's a melody we would hear again in the Volume 4 World of Remnant episodes. That might, that might be as good as I'm going to get. Fucking remembrance, dude. What a word. What a word that fucked me up. The solemn melody we hear at the start is just perfect for the remembrance of a major historical conflict like the Great War, and it's a melody we would hear again in the Volume 4 World of Remnant episodes. Hell yeah, dude. I'm good. It's a unique variation of... of <laughs> Why do I suck? It's a unique variation of the theme that, that... Oh my god. It's a unique variation of the theme that I don't think we've heard before or... Shit! <laughs>